So I started making a video about chapter 15, kinetics of a particle, but it lost momentum. But it still has potential. Oh, I've been inside too long. Let's talk a little bit about impulse and momentum. I think all of you are familiar with the idea of momentum. If your car is rolling down a hill, we say it has a lot of momentum. And why is that? Well, linear momentum is the mass times the velocity. Okay, so the more mass something has and the faster it's moving, the more momentum it has. I think impulse is a little more trickier and maybe you haven't heard of an impulse before. A linear impulse is just a force acting for a specific amount of time. Okay, so let's do a quick example showing the relationship between momentum and impulse. Okay, so we have this person in this car that's driving 30 miles per hour. And 30 miles per hour is also 13 meters per second. Now they unfortunately get into an accident and their head hits the steering wheel and comes to a complete stop. Okay, so what we have here, the equation that we use is mv1 plus some constant force. We're going to assume that the force is constant over a certain amount of time, delta t equals mv2. Okay. So in this case, we consider mv1 and mv2 being measures of momentum. And this part right in here is the impulse. We call this the linear impulse. Well, if I spell it correctly, impulse. Okay. And so what is happening here? Let's assume that the person's head hits the steering wheel and the head has a mass of five kilograms. Okay, so if we do this calculation on the left hand side, we have 5 kilograms times its initial velocity, which is 13 meters per second, plus Fc times delta t equals the mass times the velocity at state 2. And we said it's going to come to a stop once it hits the steering wheel, so that is going to be 0 on the right hand side. So we need to know what the amount of time it takes to come to rest. And let's just assume that this is 5 milliseconds or 0 0.005 seconds, okay? And that's just an approximation. Uh, hitting the steering wheel, your head's going to stop pretty quickly. Uh, so let's just assume it's 5 milliseconds. Well, what we get here when we solve this equation is Fc comes out to be... 13,000 newtons, negative, negative 13,000 newtons. That means it's in the opposite direction of the head movement. So if we consider the, the head being moved to the right here, the uh, force applied by the steering wheel is back the other direction. So 13,000. That's a lot of force. So uh, to put that, to convert that, that's almost 3,000 pounds. So approximately 3,000 pounds being applied to your head, right? Probably enough to kill you, okay? Now, since we have modern day cars, we've instrumented airbags into cars. So what is the airbag actually doing? Well, let's take a look at this equation again. So we have MV1 plus some force times delta t equals mv2, all right? The head is still coming to a stop with an airbag, all right? Let's put that at zero. And the initial velocity and the mass is still the same, right? So we have 5 times 13 still, all right? So if, if we write out this equation, all right, the amount of time that the head comes in contact with an airbag is much longer, right? That's what it's doing, right? Uh, the airbag inflates, your head hits it, it, it squishes in the airbag as it goes in. So this is actually the time your head is in contact with an airbag is about 80 milliseconds. So that's 0 .080 seconds, all right? So if we perform this calculation again, let's perform that quickly. Fc comes out to be negative 812.5 newtons, all right? And that is roughly equivalent to 190 pounds, right? 
So people that have been in accidents where an airbag's been deployed, they still say that it hurts like getting punched in the face, right? 190 pounds would feel like getting punched in the face. But at the same time, right, it's much better than 3,000 pounds if, you, if your head comes in contact with the steering wheel. So this is just a simple example of how we use impulse to our advantage to uh, keep us from getting hurt in a collision. In the previous example, we used the case where the force is being constant over the entire period that the force is being applied. All right, that's not always the case. Now, if you think about the airbag, for example, it may start out with a lower force and as your head compresses the airbag, the force may be higher. So gently applying that force higher and higher as your head comes in contact with the airbag. So what, how do we analyze a problem if the force is not constant? Well, it doesn't look too much different. So we still have our momentum terms, but our impulse is actually the sum of the integration from F dt, uh, and then the right-hand side is mv2. All right, so this term here is integrated from time one to time two, all right? So all this is is a force time graph, if you wanna think about it that way. If we have a force being applied over a specific amount of time, we're just summing the area underneath that curve, all right? So maybe we have T1 to T2 here, and we're just looking at that area underneath that curve. That's all this impulse term is doing, all right? So that is the case if you have a situation where the force being applied or the impulse being applied is not a constant over that amount of time.